let's consider the following problem. We define the discriminant of a cubic polynomial as follows. So if for our cubic, okay, we'll assume that the leading coefficient is four. We factor completely in the linear factors. Then the discriminant is given by this expression here. Now you'll note one thing the discriminant measures. If it's non-zero, then the roots are distinct and vice versa. For our problem, we'll consider cubics of the form 4x cubed minus ax minus b. Now, we want to show, if I have a cubic of this form, that its discriminant is given by a cubed minus 27b squared. So this is the expression we check to see whether the roots are distinct or not. Now, you'll note this is not the most general cubic that we could consider, but if we're in number theory, we'll see cubics of this type arise when we work with modular functions and elliptic curves. Now, our first step to show the result, I want to relate okay, our factor cubic to the discriminant. So one way to do that is by taking derivatives. Now, if we take the first derivative of our cubic, okay, in factored form, okay, we apply the product rule, and we get this expression here. So if we evaluated any of the roots, we're gonna lose two of these terms, and then what's left over is gonna be a product of differences. So we have these three expressions here, and then we just multiply them together. Now, things to note, okay, we have four times four times four. I want a 16 out in front of the discriminant, so I'll divide by a four. And if we take all the products here, we notice we're gonna pick up to get things in the right order. Minus one times minus one times minus one. So I need a minus one out in front also. Now, that gives us the general expression of the discriminant in terms of the derivative. In our special case, we get, okay, with a minus one fourth, then 12 x one squared minus a, then for x two and x three. So we wanna pull apart this expression here. If we expand, we'll get coefficients that are symmetric functions of the squares of x1, x2, and x3. We'll be able to substitute those out if we go to the original cubic. So if we expand here, the coefficients are gonna be symmetric functions of x1, x2, and x3. We can substitute these out by saying it equal to our special case. Now, for instance, we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 is zero. If we take the product of any two distinct x's, okay, and then sum over all those, we get minus a over four. And then if we take the product of all three, we get b over four. Now to get those to the squares, okay, let's try this one for instance. If I take x1 plus x2 plus x3, that's zero. So if I square it, we still get zero, but now I can expand. So we'll have the sum of the squares, then we'll have the cross terms. Now, the cross terms, okay, we know these are gonna add up to minus a over four, so the sum of the squares is gonna be equal to a over two. Now, we perform this trick again, but we do it in a way that avoids the fourth powers. So, if I take this term and square it, on the one hand, we'll have a squared over four, on the other hand, we can write this as x1 plus x2 plus x3 squared. Then we'll subtract out this part. So this is zero. So I'm just gonna square this here. So that'll give us, okay, first I'll have the four times square of each term. Then we'll have the cross terms. So I'm gonna take that four times two when we do the cross. Then we're gonna do all possible products of two of these. So these are gonna occur as so. Then I note, I can factor an x1, x2, x3 out of each term, leaving us with an x1 plus x2 plus x3, which is equal to zero. So this part's gonna go away, and we're left with okay, our expression that's remaining equal to a squared over 16. Now, we'll return to the expression for the discriminant on the previous board and fill the terms in. That gives us, okay, so we have our minus one fourth, 
we're gonna have now b squared over four squared, a squared over 16, a over two, and a cubed. When we tally everything up, okay, we work it out, and we get our a cubed minus 27b squared as promised.